About 6,000 years ago, humans met horses and have formed an indissoluble bond since then. From the Sumerian civilization around 4,500 years ago to World War II in recent times, horses have been playing an important role in human history. No matter in transportation, farming, or warfare, this species has made an indelible contribution to the progress of human society and gradually become an indispensable close friend of human beings. Today, many human activities are still inseparable from horses. Many sports such as polo, horse racing, and rodeo barrel racing involves horses. Statistics shows that there are more than 60 billion horses on the earth, among which about 7 million live in the United States, 6 million in Mexico, 5 million in Brazil, 3.4 million in China, and 3 million in Argentina and Mongolia, respectively. Why can such a big number of large-sized animals coexist with humans in harmony for thousands of years? Where do they come from? Let's follow the river of time and learn more about this mysterious species. About 65 million years ago, an asteroid of 6 miles in diameter hit Earth off the coast of Mexico, causing trillions of tons of rock to be instantly vaporized. Earthquakes, fires, tsunamis, and terrifying disasters followed one after another, causing fatal blows to three-quarters of all creatures on the planet. Even the dinosaurs, the overloads of the Earth at the time, went extinct. Fortunately, some of the tough mammals, perhaps because they are omnivores and short-statured, escaped from this catastrophe and gradually grew stronger. Ten million years later, a sudden global warming pushed an amazing mammal into the fast path of species evolution. The horse is often seen as an exemplary model of evolution because its evolutionary lineage is among the best documented in all paleontology. The evolution from the ancestor horse to the modern horse showed a very complex process, which lasted 50 million years from the Eocene to the Pliocene. The evolutionary path is not a simple ladder, but more like a tree. The history of the horse family, Equidae, became during the Eocene, which lasted from 56 million to 33.9 million years ago. During the early Eocene, there appeared to be the first ancestral horse, a hoofed browsing mammal designated correctly as Hyrocotherium, but more commonly called Eohippus, the dawn horse. During the Eocene, the climate was warm and humid. Temperate and subtropical forests were widespread, whereas grasslands were of limited extent. This environment gave birth to the earliest parasodactyls, hoofed mammals with odd number of toes, like today's rhinos, tapirs, and horses. Eohippus is one of them at that time. Fossils of Eohippus have been found in both North America and Europe, but the subsequent evolution of the horse took place mainly in North America. The Eohippus fossils show an animal that stood just a half meter tall. It had an arched back and raised hindquarters. The legs ended in padded feet with four functional hooves on each of the forefeet and three on each of the hind feet. About 49 million years ago, in the middle Eocene of North America, the thermal maximum ended and the climate became cooler and drier. Accordingly, dense forests declined and grasslands became widespread. It was in this environment where Mesohippus, the descendant of Eohippus, appeared. Mesohippus showed up about 38 million years ago and was far more horse-like than its Eocene ancestors. It was larger, averaging about 24 inches high, the snout was more muzzle-like, and the legs were longer and slenderer. Mesohippus also had a larger brain. The fourth toe on the forefoot had been reduced to a vestige so that both the forefeet and hindfeet carried three functional toes and a foot pad. By the Oligocene, which lasted from about 33.9 to 23.8 million years ago, one lineage of Mesohippus had evolved in Meohippus. So Mesohippus and Meohippus coexisted on the continent together and started to adapt to North America's changing landscape. They both had more molars than Eohippus did, and their teeth had higher crests, for grinding more fibrous, abrasive food like grass. 
Both were also slightly larger than the Eohippus. Mesohippus weighed about 23 kilograms or 50 pounds, while Meohippus averaged about twice that. In the mid Oligocene, the Mesohippus disappeared. Meohippus seemed to be the only equid genus left at that time. In early Miocene, which lasted from 23 million to 5 million years ago. Another important ancestor of the modern horse that was even better adapted to the life on the plains appeared, Parahippus. Parahippus and its descendants marked a radical departure in that they had teeth adapted to eating grass. It was the first early horse that was a true hypsodont. This means its teeth were not only long, but also had deep crowns and short roots allowing Parahippus to withstand a lot of wear while eating abrasive food. This proved a huge advantage of Parahippus for living on the plains. The change from browsing to grazing dentition was essentially completed in Merychippus, which evolved from Parahippus during the middle and late Miocene. This change allowed Merychippus to fully adapt from chewing high-growing plants to abrasive food. Merychippus must have looked much like a modern pony. It was fairly large, standing about 1 meter or 38.4 inches high, and its skull was similar to that of the modern horse. Its leg structure was also well adapted for swift running on a hard ground. Their feet remained three-toed, and the two side toes became rather small. In these forms, the large central toe bore the animal's whole weight of around 225 kilograms or 500 pounds. There were strong ligaments that attached the hoofed central toe to the bones of the ankles and lower legs, providing a spring mechanism that allows it to run faster. Merychippus gave rise to numerous evolutionary lines during the late Miocene. Most of these, including Hipparion, Neohipparion, and Nanapus, retained the three-toed foot of their ancestors. One line, however, led to the monodactyl, a one-toed ungulate called Pliohippus. As a grandfather of the modern horse, Pliohippus appears to be the source of the latest radiation in the horse family. It is believed to have given rise to the genera that thrived for a time in South America and then led to Dinohippus, which in turn led to modern horse, Equus. Pliohippus had a couple of depressions or fossae in the bones in front of its eyes. Equus does not. The fossae in the face of Dinohippus are shallow suggesting that it is an intermediate from between Pliohippus and Equus. Equus has a distinctive passive stay apparatus formed by bones and tendons to help it conserve energy while standing for long periods. Dinohippus is the first horse to show a rudimentary form of this character, providing additional evidence of the close relationship between Dinohippus and Equus. Some 4 million to 4.5 million years ago during the Pliocene, Equus, the genus to which all modern equines, including horses, asses, and zebras belong, evolved from Pliohippus. This new form was extremely successful and had spread from the plains of North America to South America and to all parts of the Old World by the early Pleistocene, which lasted from about 2.6 million to 11,700 years ago. Equus flourished in its North America homeland throughout the Pleistocene, but then, about 10,000 to 8,000 years ago, disappeared from North America. The debate over the true reason for the extinction has lasted for 270 years, but there is still no final conclusion. Many researchers have blamed their demise on incoming Paleo-Indians, the first Americans who ever hunted large mammals by rapidly expanding human population. But a new study figures climate and environmental changes instead. The study shows that around the time of the extinctions between 15,000 and 12,000 years ago, there were two major climatic changes. One was the abrupt warming that began around 14,700 years ago, and the other was a cold snap around 12,900 years ago, during which the northern hemisphere returned to near glacial conditions. One or both of these important changes and their ecological ramifications have been implicated in the megafauna extinctions. Fortunately, the horses had migrated out of North America, survived the extinction of other continents in Asia, Europe, and Africa. The submergence of the Bering Land Bridge prevented any return migration of horses from Asia, and Equus was not reintroduced into its native continent until the Spanish explorers brought horses 
in the late 15th century. At that time, North America was widely covered with open grasslands, serving as a great habitat for these horses. They quickly adapted to the new environment and spread across the nation. Around 1550, the first known feral horses escaped Mexico City, and more followed over time. Native Americans began to capture and ride the horses, spreading them further across the continent. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. We are committed to helping people know more about the world by sharing knowledge of the horse in history. Here's also some homework for you guys who are interested in horses. Try to answer these questions. 1. What other animal besides the horse are good examples of evolution? 2. Can you think of other reasons why horses died out in North America? Share your idea in the comments and see you in the next one.